Good morning from a super windy, and it actually just stopped raining. A pretty chilly Bainscliff. I'm out here with Oliver today. There he is. And we're looking for the Bainscliff moss frog, which is another one of the moss frog species we've been trying to track down with some vengeance. We're just making our way just around this bend here to check out some of the seeps where we heard them calling just as we arrived. So hopefully we're going to come right and then we're going to explore the rest of this mountain and the past and hopefully turn up some other interesting animals. Just in case you're wondering the sort of habitat we're in, there are literal warning signs for leopards out here. So that would be pretty cool to see one. That's going to be super unlikely, especially during the day. So that did not take long at all. We haven't even gotten to the spot where we're trying to go. And I already have our first Bainscliff moss frog. Have a look at this little guy. Incredibly dark belly with the speckles. Obviously give you guys a better look at him once we photograph him and once you release him back. But yeah, it was just a bit of a touch and go situation to try catch him. So I couldn't risk the film clip. But there he is, the Bainscliff moss frog. This has been our major target for today. This is the Bainscliff moss frog. You can just see from how small they are just on the surface of my hand. And yeah, these guys just want to zip away. This is quite a dark one. I'll give you an example of the little red one we just saw too. This is how we're just looking for these moss frogs just on the side of the road seep here. You can see everything's dripping down. All this moisture. So the wind is absolutely atrocious, but I just picked up another Bainscliff moss frog. Tiny little red specimen. I'll give you guys a better look. I need to try locate Oliver. I don't know where he is. He's somewhere up in here. So let me try get him a shot and see if I can find him. See, here's the little tomato sauce variation that we got. It's just a really bright red one. As the name suggests with bicolor, they're quite variable. But this guy's super small and really difficult to actually get any decent footage, as you can see. But he's got a nice little yellow stripe on the spine. But we're done photographing him and we're just gonna leave him here in the moss. So just clambering down this little mountain, and we just got a little breviceps, a little mountain rain frog. Let me see if I can give you guys a look at him. He's very small, but let's have a squiz. There you go. This is breviceps montanus, the mountain rain frog. The same species that we saw in the video, the last video. There you go. The grumpiest frog on the face of the mountain. You know what one of the best things about having a Suzuki Jimny is you can literally find the tiniest little space to park your car on a pass like this. Just didn't go over the edge, so thank goodness for that. But what other cars can fit in these tiny little spots? Not many, let me tell you. So we're just peeking in these rock crevices trying to find Afro Bureau or the Hawek or Flat Gecko. I just tickled this insane good looking specimen off the crack. Have a look at the tail on this thing. They're absolutely ridiculous. They've got these huge eyes, these big sort of flat toes, and these ridiculously looking tails. Um, you can see how perfectly camouflaged they are against these rock cracks. Yeah, and he was just in this deep vertical rock crack. There's a couple of other fissures and cracks just along the way here. So Oliver and I are going to give those a bash and see if we can't come right. Stoked. Another new species for the channel. I've seen these guys a couple of times, but always nice to get a new species for the channel. So we just got that little stick in the crevice there. We managed to, with a bit of teamwork, get another one out. This is again Aphrodera hawkensis, the Huequa flat kicker. Beautiful specimen. You can see you got these crazy topaz. This is quite a lot yellower than the other specimen we got, but just have a look at the tail on these things. They're absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so got the moss frogs, got our flat geckos. 
Oliver's got his red beanie. And we're going to check out what else we can find. So this is a close-up look of this Hawekwa gecko, the Aphrodira hawekwensis that we just pulled out of that rock rack. Well, tickled out of the rock rack. Um, you can see they've got these amazingly flat tails. You can see he's obviously just cruising along on this rock face just before he goes into his rock rack. This is the second Huekua flat kicker that we caught. You can see how large these eyes are, how big the toe centers are. This crazy carrot type tail. But we're just going to pop him back on the rock. We're just going to make sure he goes back into his little rock crevice. So I just got to pick up Oliver quick. We're on this pass. He just went to go release some frogs. So it looks like we picked up a hitchhiker. Yo. We should never pick up hitchhikers, but here we go. So it's been a couple days since you saw me last. I'm actually out here with the one and only Peaches and Oliver, somewhere down there. And as you can hear in the background, we're looking for cacos. You hear them buzzing around. We've got a couple so far. We've just got them in this little container. Give you guys a look before we go to photograph them and obviously just release them. Yeah, you can see these really cool little spotted bellies. Yeah, and this is the flat caco, caco sternum platace. See if we can give you guys a little look at them without losing them. See, these guys are absolutely tiny. But yeah, I'm going to pop the lid back on. We're going to go photograph them and we'll see what else we can turn up in the rest of the evening. We got our first flip of the day. And this big old chunk of concrete. Got a nice size brown water snake. And we're right next to a flay here, um, or a little pond. So that goes without saying. Um, yeah, it's a good sign. First bit of concrete we flipped. Hopefully we can turn up something else. You can just pick up this guy up and drop his concrete down real quick. Come on, brother. We gotta put your house back. It's terribly windy, but I just touched this piece of bark and a brown water snake fell out from under behind it. So it's our second brown water snake of the day. We need to get a grip on this guy. But have a look at that. Strange, I've never seen them under bark on trees, but in habitat where there's not much cover, that must be where they like to hang out. <laughs> We're just gonna let this guy go back under the side of this bark here. So right next to where I found that large brown water snake, I found another brown water snake and a tiny little baby brown water snake under the same piece of bark. Have a go at that. Crazy. This is like the fourth one that I've seen in the space of 10 minutes. Wild. We just got our fifth snake of the day. A tiny little excuse of a slug eater. Have a look at this guy. He's absolutely minute. I really would have expected to have seen more of these guys by, by this stage in the game. I mean, we've been here for about 45 minutes. But I'm just going to drop this rock back. Have a quick archer shot and he is gonna go back on his way. This dude can go back under his rock and continue doing absolutely nothing. I think we're about to get rained out as well so we're gonna have to get out of here real soon. And just under this old car bumper we got the ever-present cape skink, Trachylepis capensis. He can go back living under his discarded piece of car. So this is not something I was expecting to see today, or ever really. This flat caco, as you can see, has an extra limb. So it basically has a third arm, or a fifth leg, whichever way you want to look at it, coming out the corner of its mouth. Uh, this is usually caused by a small parasite in the development stage of the tadpole um, of the frog as it develops. And then for whatever reason, it grows an extra limb. Super interesting. We're just going to release these cacos in this site that looks terrible, but the fact is the cacos actually, this is the kind of habitat they like. 
Um, you can see we've got them all in this jar here that we've been photographing. We'll just plop them here. And this is pretty much where a lot of them came from. So you'll see they're just doing their things. They're not terribly great at swimming, but you'll see they will crawl up into this emergent vegetation and start calling. That call you heard in the background those are just the clicking stream frogs. Awesome, pretty good day, evening, and we got some herbs. Guys are busy packing up and we are gonna get out of here. Not a bad sunset either. So we're back out here again after that little five-legged caco incident last night. I'm out here with the peach. He's down there somewhere. I'm just scratching through these restios and we got a little Breviceps montanus, the mountain rain frog. A little bit unexpected to see such a big frog while searching for things that are, you know, sort of 18, 20 millimeters in length. But yeah, never a bad time to see a Breviceps. We'll grab a couple of pictures of this dude and just pop him back in his restios. So you can hear all these mouse frogs calling just amongst all these rest areas and these are just a couple that we have photographed and we're just releasing them now um, back into the little mossy seeps where they came from and you see these guys like we've seen in the previous videos they are so tiny actually incredibly difficult to show up on the on the camera it's quite a nice looking one you can see all the other males calling right in the nearby bushes but yeah we're pretty much done with these guys in the brick steps i'm gonna head out so just arrived at this little roadside stop, I'd just gone and done some shopping and decided to check out a new spot that I'd never even taken the time for. And Fuji, you can hear it's quite noisy next to the highway here. But have a go at that, that's a nice looking adult female Cape Talk chameleon. She's very dark, she's trying to warm up, it's quite cold. Um, it's probably only about 20 degrees, so she's trying to soak up as much heat as she can. But let's see if we can't find a nice light coloured one. Dude, check it out. There's a massive mole snake right here. No, get away. So we got a huge mole snake. I think it's quite, yeah, it's in the, oh, it's not in the blue. So I'm actually gonna grab my camera really quick. Uh, before he decides to go, I was gonna get some in situ, but he's not gonna stick around. Uh, yeah, it's a decent sized adult mole snake. So we still at this little roadside spot and I just try to move this log. And we have, what do we have here? It looks like a nice looking brown water snake, yeah. Oh wow, it's a nice chunky sized brown water snake. <laughs> Give you a better look, this guy's freezing cold. Um, it's pretty cool, I haven't seen one of any notable size like this in a long, long time. He's by no means a monster. I mean, these things get to about a hundred centimeters. Have a look at that guy. Beautiful yellow, yellows and browns. And yeah, he's starting to heat up a bit. But yeah, we'll have a, a decent look at him once he calms down. But again, we're just gonna grab a couple of photographs of this guy, like we do. And we're just gonna carry on turning up some more chameleons. So here's just a close look at this brown water snake. Um, Apologies for the roadside noise, which I believe is quite loud. But you can see the snake is quite banged up. He's got quite a few like scars and lesions on him. Um, but that's just generally what comes from living in an urban setting. You can see he's got these really pale colored upper lips, uniform brown, gorgeous looking snakes, as common as they are. Um, and they're really common around these little ponds and marshes. They sit amongst these sort of these sort of reed beds and right close to the water here where they typically look after the frog population as they're mainly amphibian and fish feeders. They'll eat little geckos and skinks occasionally as well. But nice little brown water snake. We are pretty much done with him now. So grab a couple of pictures and let him go on his way back under his log. So we're just releasing this brown water snake. I'm not gonna release it under the grass under that log where I found it. 
just because as you can hear they're busy cutting the grass so I'm going to put them deep inside this grass that the guys aren't going to cut just so he hopefully doesn't get a weed whacked. So I just saw this old bag lying on the floor and as I flipped it I saw a snake shoot inside. I haven't seen what snake it is but let's get it away from the reeds and let's have a look. There's definitely a snake in here. I saw the tail shoot in here. So let's go and hope with me. I actually don't want to get too invested in here because I don't know what it is just yet. There you go. Oh, it's a little spotted grass snake. <laughs> have a go at this. He's right in this backpack. Can a catch be any easier? I'm getting covered at the ants. Let me grab him and we'll have a good look. Have a go at that. That is unexpected. I was just at the rest here at Columbia looking for chameleons and we got this guy. He's obviously, he's here just alongside this really polluted, dilapidated little flare, which is not very nice to look at. But he was obviously just basking amongst the only bit of cover that was alongside here. And that is a spotted grass snake. Sorry for the noise, I'm right amongst a whole bunch of cars and a little shopping center. But yeah, this guy's absolutely fired up. He's so warm to the touch. And that is the ever-present spotted grass snake. It's actually a really pretty one. I'm definitely gonna shoot some photos after you finish with these chameleons. And yeah, unexpected. Two snakes on this little roadside stop. Just got this little Cape Thorpe chameleon as he's shedding. Have a look at this. You can see just how these big sheets of skin start flaking off. Much unlike a snake that sheds off in one piece, these guys will, it'll flake off. They'll rub against the branches and the rest of yours. Um, until it all comes off and until then they don't look all that attractive but nice to show you a little bit more of the life cycle of the Cape Thorpe Chameleon. Of course I just rushed a snake out of here and I think Courtney's got him by the tail. Okay wait let me grab your camera. Indisposed. Um, he's trying to get it out. Haven't seen it yet. I just saw its tail shoot into this bush. Uh, I think it's a spotted grass snake. Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. Oh, cool. Decent sized one. Am I going to get bitten? Just grab with both hands. Let's just stop it from thrashing. Have a little look at him. Oh, have a look at that. And we're literally to the same spot we were yeah. the other day. Tiny little pond okay, right next I'm to the road. Clapped. He's not going to bite you. Have a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Had a little go at the camera there. But yeah, oh. these Western Cape ones are so pretty with these nice markings. Yo, Courtney boy Stoke, you've got sure. the mountain in the background, a slung in hand, <laughs> so what we like. We're gonna grab some pictures of this guy. Um, we actually we were here... Oh, and the beautiful musky smell. ...to photograph some chameleons in these rest areas. But we're gonna grab some pictures of this dude real quick. And we're gonna see what else we can turn up. So we just out here with the boy Peach. Peach is just releasing a little spotted grass snake again. He is very reluctant in going underneath his house. Yeah, but you gotta ask him nicely. Yeah, just put him in the grass and you'll be gone with him, friend. <laughs> so we're gonna do try a bit of flip clip action. But of course we never get much when we do flip clip actions. Whoa! Double flip! <laughs> Carissa and Sega and a spotted grass snake. Ah, oh, he's getting away! Um, can you come grab these? Oh, yeah. the boys! A little the tiny small boys. Crew sand snake and a little spotted grass snake. It's like our fifth or sixth spotted grass snake for the day. Gotta love the double flips. Could we probably just get a couple of pictures from these. So the flip clips will work for once. Just hey, a group boy. of small boys. So we just got the double flip under there. As Courtney still has it. We're going to flip the rest of the stuff. Um, let's see, these big pieces of concrete are usually the ones. Yo! How beastly! A look at this egg eater. This thing is massive. Ew. This is a chunky rhombic egg eater. This thing is beautiful. I haven't actually seen one this size since I've been in the Cape. Sure. Yo, we're getting the slungs, <laughs> boys. Of course, cool. so let's actually Jeez, snap some pictures that, of these guys. This guy's, yo, it must be close on. What is that? Like, 70 yeah, centimeters? 70. 80 centimeters? Beautiful rhombic egg eater. Um, and these guys obviously only eat, only eat eggs. One of this size will easily take down a chicken egg. This thing is absolutely insane. 
Yeah, so at least we finally oh, cracked on with the boys. snakes today after this morning cracking all the frogs. Sick. Yeah, let's get some pictures before this light goes. The lights are looking a little bit long in the ground. Um, yo, my boy Peaches, we haven't even released or <laughs> photographed the other snakes and we've got a fistful of snakes. No stranger to big eggies. We love to see it. Check out this guy's flattening his head. We've just got some pics and stuff. Oh, we're just gonna obviously pop it back. Come on, friend. Um, yeah, this guy's super cool. You would have seen in that footage just how upset they get that we just took. But yeah, I'm gonna put him back under his piece of concrete really quickly. Um, we don't want to stress him out too much. And then we are getting out of here. So that's gonna be pretty much it for this quick little stop. I'm obviously out with the peach and we are going to head out tomorrow.